So we're going to put this back on here. And what number do you see on the barrel? Six. Six. Okay. So what we'll write down is 0 .006 inches. Zero, zero, six inches. So now all we do is we just add these up. So we have six, five, seven. So that particular measurement or that particular spot on that piece is 0.756 inches or 756 thousandths of an inch. Okay? That is how you're going to measure something. Okay? Now I feel that. A square or flat object is pretty easy to measure. But we do, on occasion, run into a round object. Okay? These can take a little bit more finesse, I guess you could say, a little bit more getting used to on how to use this, or how to measure a round object. What you want to do is basically the same thing. You want to open up the micrometer large enough to fit over the shaft, and you want to snug it down on there. Now, because, because we have a round object, I could have the micrometer exaggerating it over here or over here. I want to be right in the middle, okay? So that's why I say a round object may take a little bit of getting used to to measure. But with practice, I think you can measure it accurately. Uh, does everybody understand how to add up the numbers once we get them from the micrometer? Okay. All right. Um, like I said, if we don't keep the decimal places correct, for instance, on the point zero five zero, if I would have wrote it something like this, Our old dimension was 0.756 inches, right? If I would add this up, I end up with 6, 0, 2, 1. That's a big difference. It's a half inch difference. Okay? It's very important. I don't know if any of you have worked on turbine jobs or jobs where you have to do these precision measurements. A half inch is a big deal. Okay, so it's very important that we take our accurate readings. Now, like I said, with this box, the micrometers go from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6. So we can measure 6 inches. What do we do if we have something larger? Well, they do make larger micrometers. Okay. This particular micrometer, it's not going to be as easy to hold with your pinky. So you may need to get assistance with larger micrometers, like something like this. This one, I can actually measure from 9 inches to 12 inches with this micrometer. The way we do that is the end of this unscrews. And we put different measuring surfaces in there. Again, we have to verify the calibration on these before we take the measurements. And with this set, there, does, there comes standards with them. You're going to use them the exact same way as you did the other instrument or the other standards for the other micrometers. But like I said, you may need assistance, especially if you haven't used micrometers like this before. When you do replace these measuring surfaces, you want to make sure that this is snug. Again, you don't need to put pliers on here, but you want to make sure that it is snug and it is tight. Now what we need to do, we took our measurements, we're all done with our micrometer at the end of the day. So what we want to do is we want to take this and spin it all the way in. And it's a good idea not to run it all the way tight. The reason why that is, is because it's possible that if you run it tight, moisture could get in there and it could rust the measuring surfaces. If that happens, then you're going to have an inaccurate micrometer. You can send it back to the factory. So I'm leaving maybe like a 30-second of a gap, and there's a lock on there. This ring right here is a lock, so we can lock that down so it won't spin. 
if this is traveling around in a gang box or in your car or something like that, I recommend that you put the locks on. That way it's not going to spin closed, it's going to get rusted. Um, why do we want to, uh, do, do we have any questions? Okay, I got some questions for you, just as a little review on what we've gone over. Uh, why, why should we clean the micrometer when we take it out of the box? It's your accurate measurement. Okay. Uh, why are we checking calibration? Let's make sure there's an accurate measurement with the micrometer you're using. Right. We don't know, we can measure something, but unless we verify the calibration, we don't know if indeed it's measured correctly. Okay, so that's the reason for calibration. Uh, why is it important that we use a proper tension when we're measuring a particular object? Not to damage the micrometer or the surface you're measuring. Right. Sometimes we're measuring soft surfaces, brass, fabric material, things like that. They're very soft, perhaps even lead. So we want to use caution. We don't want to over. We don't want to open this up either. Like I said, it's possible we could tighten this up and flex that open, and we don't want to do that either. Uh, why is it important that we write down and keep our decimal places in the right columns? What happens if we don't do that? Recording in uh, incorrect measurements. Right. As I showed you, just moving a decimal place one, one column changed our our dimension a half inch. Okay, we can't have that on a job. Now what do we want to do when we return it back to the case? Clean it. Clean it. And we may want to put the lock on there so it doesn't spin closed, right? Okay. Now we'll go out in the shop and we'll take measurements.